Okay, so in this video, um, we're going to create part number one of this, what's called a trolley assembly, according to this book that I found this in. Um, this is a pretty um, difficult part if you don't approach it the right way. So I'm making a video um, to explain how to make it a little bit easier, hopefully. Okay, so we're going to jump over to Creo. I'm going to move this to my other screen. And uh, for my students, for this current video, this is lesson number six. So this is going to be called MS1006. Dash a one. I'm gonna hit OK. All right. Now I'll turn my datum planes on. Now the trick to this part is there's a couple of different ways you can approach it. Um, obviously, there's a nice profile here that we can make with a revolve. We could actually even minimize the features um, and make this with just one revolve with these snap rings, um, and then also uh, a couple rounds. And we'll have to put a hole pattern in as well. Um, so there's a couple of different ways you're gonna do you can do it. Just to make it a little bit easier to see, I'm going to make it by making the snap rings in separate, um, a separate sketch. The reason I like to do that is usually a snap ring is dependent on your design. So if I'm going to put like say a bearing in here, um, which if we scroll up and look, there is a bearing that goes in there. If I was going to put a bearing in there and then all of a sudden, let's say I change how I'm going to do this, um, I may want to just remove those retaining rings entirely. So instead of having to redefine that sketch, we could just delete the feature. Okay, now in this case, I know I'm not going to delete the feature, but I'm still going to make it that way just because that's how I would have approached it in an industry. So I'll move this to my other screen. We'll jump into Creo and start with a revolve uh, with my revolve i'm going to hold right click i'm going to define my sketch i'm going to pick i uh, will go with my front plane right plane works for my reference um, so i'm just going to middle click and then rotate my screen if your screen doesn't rotate just hit this button right up here sketch view um, button my config i have it set up where um, it is going to automatically rotate so now I have to create the profile and this is not the easiest thing in the world because I have to think about how this thing looks. Now there's a couple things that you might not notice looking at this part right away. For one, this is a slanted surface on the top. This is a slanted surface on the back side with this 15 degrees. This one's nine and a half. Um, and then actually this one on the top is also slanted. So I'm gonna move that to my other screen and I'm gonna go ahead and put a center line in first. You should always do that on a revolve first um, so that it'll understand it's your axis of a revolution. Um, and then I'm going to try, try being the key word, um, to create this sketch as best I can. Okay. Um, so my first question is where do I want my plane um, to be located um, for? Uh, the side of this. There's not really a symmetric surface here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I think I'll probably just stick my plane on probably just on the back side, I guess. There's not really a logical place to put it. Um, we could put it in the front. This sticks out a little bit. This sticks in. This sticks in. I could split that if I wanted. But I'm just going to put it on the back. It'll be easier to draw it that way. Um, so we're going to come out and then slant down then slant out then down then in then down and this isn't gonna look anything like it to start off but i'm at least making sure all my stuff doesn't line up so i'm not like trying to line that up there and make anything equal this is going to come out this is going to come down back up in back up at an angle again make sure it's not parallel because those are not at the same angle actually and we're going to come right up so you see if i drop it down that parallel constraint comes up there's a couple ways i can get around that i could also right click and it'll turn it off um but i'm just actually ooh, i'm gonna actually just come right up like that 
and close that up. And that's kind of um, a good starting point for my sketch. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my constraints. Okay, so a couple constraints. For one, these two surfaces are in line with each other. So I'm going to say that this point and this point is horizontal to each other, or are horizontal to each other. Uh, other than that, I don't know that I have a whole lot of other constraints I can put in. Um, now, I'm going to put in dimensions, but I'm not going to change any of them yet. I'm just going to put in the dimensions that I have. So I have an overall width, because I'm going to have to scale this thing. The actual dimension is like 1.8125 here, and I have 251. So I'm going to put the dimensions in. I have a dimension from this point to this back surface. I have a dimension for the diameter here. So I'm going to go outside, center line, outside again. I'm going to middle click. I have a dimension for the inside point. Point, center line, point again, middle click. I have a dimension for the outside of this. Outside, center line, outside again. I have one for the inside, inside, center line, inside again. I have, let's see, where else do I have some diameters? I have one for this point, actually, so I'm going to pick here. I don't know why you would dimension that point, but that's what they gave us, so we're going to use it. Um, and then I'm going to put in some angles before I put my widths in. Here's how I like to put in those angles, by the way. If you want to get like that nice angle right here, you can do a couple things. You can put a construction line in, or what I like to do is put a center line across right there and then I also need one for here and I also need one for here and now what I can do once I middle click a few times I can hit my dimension pick this line pick this line middle click that one's gonna be what 9.5 this line this line middle click make sure you middle click in the middle just to show you what's gonna happen if you pick it wrong if I pick these two and I middle click out here whoop, went off my dimension sorry about that I go out here, I'm going to get a weird angle around the other way. So I don't want that. I want to middle click, middle click, and then, or left click, left click, and then middle click inside where I want the dimension to show up. So that one's 15. And then this one, this one, this is a small area. So I'm going to zoom in and middle click. That one is eight degrees. And you got a whole bunch of weird angles on this guy. Um, all right. And. Let's see. Let's put in the other dimensions they have. I think I noticed something that they didn't call out in the drawing, um, but that's okay. We'll fix it in a second. So we have this width. We have this width. We have a dimension from this outside line to this inside line. I'm going to middle click. I know it's already there, but I'm just going to put it in. Um, and then I have a dimension from this line to this line. And then I have a dimension from this line out to here. Not the way that I'm probably going to dimension my drawing, but um, for modeling, I obviously have to use the dimensions they give me. Also, there's one other thing that I just noticed. This dimension right here is actually in line, even though it's kind of goofy how they show it. If you look at my drawing, that dimension right there is actually in line with this edge out here. Or at least I have to assume so because there's no other dimension on this part that gives me that dimension. So. I'm going to go ahead and say horizontal. I'm going to say that this point is horizontal to this point. And now this dimension is going to apply to everything. It says that I'm missing one more dimension. Let me see here. Let's see. I got the inside. I got the outside. Let's see what's going to happen. So if I don't know what a dimension is going to do, okay, a lot of times what I'm going to do is I'm going to click it, go to modify. And I'll just kind of drag my wheel around. So what's that doing? That's moving that point over. Oh, so I know what I'm missing. I'm missing a width. So my width is right here. Dimension, this line to this line. Um, usually when I make these videos, um, while I do model it quickly on my own beforehand, so I'm familiar with the part, um, I do like to kind of troubleshoot things in real time because, you know, this is what you're going to be doing. I mean, you don't usually model a part three times. Um, before you actually model it. So I don't want everything to work perfectly. we got to figure out how to solve problems when we run into them. Okay, so now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick all these dimensions with a big window. I'm going to hold right click. I'm going to go to modify. 
and I'm going to lock my scale. Now I'm going to find one that I know. This one up here I know is 1.8125. Everything's going to scale down. I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to go like this. Now my dimensions are a little closer to what they're supposed to be. They are still way off, but they're a little bit closer. So let me get all my widths correct first. So I'm going to drag these out. I like to kind of space things out because that's actually how they're going to show up when you show them on your drawing. If you make your drawing properly and show your annotations, as all my stu students know to do, and they do it very well. Um, so let's see, my other widths I have, this is 0.375. This one is 0.375. This one is 0.375. Ooh, exciting. And then this one out front is 0.125. Okay, so there's our widths. Now for my diameters, this thing's going to get a little wacky early on, so I got to kind of look at where all these are so that I can make them all the right size and kind of understand where everything is. So I got everything at least spaced out. So I'll start with the largest one. Probably going to give me a crazy. Example, 7.125, yeah, that one's way up there. Now I'll go to my next furthest out one, which is this one. This one is 6.375. Um, and I'm going to go to this one, which is 5.25. Then I'm going to go to this guy. Work from my out, outside end usually gives you the best result, 2.5. And my inside, where my bearing is, is actually going to require a calculation. Okay, so I have a limit dimension of 1.8504 plus 1.8498. I'm going to get the answer to that. I'm going to divide it by 2. 1.8501 is my nominal. That's what I'm going to model to, and then I'll put the tolerance in on my drawing. Okay, 1.8501. Now I have all my shape. It's not the nicest drawing in the world, but we'll fix these dimensions once I make a video for the drawing of it. But we at least have our shape now. Now I'm going to hit OK. It's going to spin around. That looks an awful lot like what we're trying to create. And I'll middle click to say that works for me. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in those retaining rings. So I'm going to go revolve. I'm going to pick this side plane. And now just so I can see everything I'm working on, it's going to get a little confusing. I'm going to go to wireframe mode. And now before I do anything, I'm going to hold right click and go to my references. I'm going to say, I know I'm going to use this. I know I'm going to use these sides probably. And other than that, I'm good. So I can hit close. Now I put a center line in. We're making a revolve. I always put a center line in first. Don't forget, are you going to think you did something wrong? Now I'm going to put whoop, wrong rectangle. Hit the down arrow, go to corner rectangle, put one there, put one there. Are these the same size? Yes, they are. So I'll line them up like that, and then I'll put in some constraints. Always put your constraints before your dimensions. It's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of dimensions. So they're both the same retaining ring, so I'm going to put the widths as the same. Okay, so now all I'm going to have to really do is locate them, and then I can dimension just one retaining ring. Okay, so I'll dimension the left one. So I already have a diameter right here. If you don't have a diameter, I'll show you how to put it in. We're going to pick the outside, center line, outside again, middle click. And then for a retaining ring, we need a width. And then I also need a location. Usually I don't do it from the end, but that's the way they want it. So we're going to go from here. And I may change that later. Okay, so that is 0.125 from the end. This retaining ring is. Where is my dimension for it? 0.159 nominally. Nominally. Can't talk today, I guess. And the nominal diameter is 2.002. .002. So there's my retaining ring. And then I need to locate the other one. These ones are locate, located between each other for the um, for the bearing. Um, and the nominal for that bearing is 0.5545. There's my retaining rings. I'm going to hit, ooh, that does not look like their sketch though, which I find very interesting. So they have one, six. Yeah, that's what they have. 
Definitely don't look the same as theirs, but that's okay. We'll put them in. And then I'm going to go back to my shading so I can see everything. There's my retaining ring grooves. I'm going to take a look at this real quick to make sure I still agree with myself. Yeah, 160, 159. Yeah, that's how big it is. Diameter to the outside, two point. Yeah, that's what it is. So they just didn't draw it very well. All right, now middle click or hit the checkbox to put those in. Now I just need a hole pattern. So I'm going to put a hole in, and one of the holes is like right on this spot, so I'll put that one in first. So I'm going to put the hole in. The size of this hole, it says it is cast with a 0.5 core. It goes all the way through. And now I'm going to go to placement, and I'm going to switch it to a diameter. And with my diameter, I want to go to my axis in the middle. And I want to go to one of the planes. What I'm going to say is it's going to be on that plane at zero degrees, so I can do a nice section later. And then the diameter that it's on is four. Look at that, that looks pretty good. I'm hit OK. I'm going to right click my hole. I'm going to go to pattern. And I'm going to use a nice axis pattern up here. I'm going to pick my axis. I'm going to say, no, I only want three of them. And I'm going to flip this so it goes automatically around 360 degrees. Because on my drawing, I can just say that that's equally spaced. And I don't need to have an angle in between. So I'm going to middle click to say OK. <coughs> and now all I have left are rounds. But of course, <coughs> I'm going to save <coughs> because I need to. I want something to break. So I'm going to put my rounds in. If I look at this, there are two rounds here. But one thing I don't like about how they're doing this is that they're pointing to two different rounds. One of them adds material. One of them removes material. I don't like calling those out as a two times because that's difficult for the manufacturer to really understand what you're saying, especially when we have other rounds in here that are around the same size. Okay, um, if we look inside, do they even call it out? Yep, and those are very, I mean, from an eighth to three sixteenths to one sixteenth, I mean, those are all going to look pretty darn close to the same on a drawing, um, especially one that's going to require a format as big as this. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put one round in for my outside one. 0.125, look at that, I was already on the number. I'm going to middle click to put it in. Now I'm going to put a second round in right here. That's also 0.125. Now when I show my dimensions on my drawing, show my annotations, they're both going to have their own independent dimension. Now I'll put my next round in, which is on the very outside here. That one's going to be 0.0625. I'm going to middle click. I'm going to put my interior rounds in, okay, which go right here. Hold control, make sure to hold control. We don't want to create additional sets. If I don't hold control, it's going to make another set there. I don't want that. So hold control, put it under the same set. They're all the same size. I'm going to go to the back side. Hold control, click that. Hold control, click that. The size of that one is 0.1875, also known as 3 sixteenths. I'm going to middle click to put that in. My last feature is a big old round on the back right here. And this one is 0.562, the ground. Okay, now if I rotate this around, go back to my standard orientation, um, we can see that this looks exactly, other than that retaining ring I drew wrong, this looks exactly like um, this part now. Okay, so all I need to do is save, and I'm all done. Okay.